Hello, I'm Dazzling One, and before I even get into today's video, I just want to say it has been a long, drawn-out week. So it was the week before this, just with all of my college courses, wrapping up with the busy work, last-minute projects before finals. But I have managed to get a tad bit of research in there, and it's sort of a throwback to last year's video when I discussed ley lines and portals. I will go over ley lines and portals again, but this time it's going to be with more of an emphasis on electromagnetism and the health effects as well as the paranormal. Electromagnetism has been observed from the days of antiquity all the way to modern scientists and it is the study of the electromagnetic force which encompasses electromagnet fields manifesting and as I discussed in the past, our bodies have electromagnetic fields around them, and I believe that is what some would think of in the paranormal as an aura, or animals have electromagnetic fields, so do spirits. The other thing is that the Earth has an electromagnetic field that shields it from solar winds hitting it, and many are concerned that with some of the experiments that CERN is doing that it could affect that as well. And that is why in the North Pole at certain points of the year, you can see Aurora Borealis, or in the South Pole, you can see Aurora Orealis. I'm sure as a child, you've heard of the electromagnetic spectrum. But if you're unfamiliar with it, then the electromagnetic spectrum measures electromagnetic radiation through wavelengths and frequencies. Now, a frequency is measured per second by hertz, whereas a wavelength is measured in meters and it has a range of different rays ranging from visible light all the way to gamma or x-rays so starting with ley lines ley lines are called many names silver cords I've heard them called black lines Hartman as well as curry lines and they are referred to as Earth's energy grid. They run all across the world and are naturally occurring. There's a lot of thought that ley lines are used as highways for spirits to travel as well as anyone who is astral projecting and having an out-of-body experience. At some of the areas on the grid where it intersects, it can be referred to as vertices or vortexes, and it forms a type of matrix. And these areas are thought by some to be portals or stargates. And a lot of the pyramids, like the Pyramid of Giza, or the Teotihuacan Pyramid, or Stonehenge, or any other big megalithic structure that everyone says, where did it come from, are built on these ley lines as well. A lot of modern buildings are built on ley lines by design. And the reason for this is because of the amount of electromagnetic energy that these ley lines produce. Even some pretty gruesome events have taken place on ley lines, and they are also associated with cursed areas. I believe ley lines personally are strongholds. And like a stronghold, I believe that it doesn't have to stay that way forever. But many do report that living on a ley line or being on a ley line can have health effects as well. It can cause night terrors, depression, migraines, insomnia, and of course heightened paranormal activity. I believe the knowledge of ley lines was introduced by none other than the Watchers in the, from the Book of Enoch. And a lot of arenas where concerts take place are built on ley lines because when you have an artist that comes and they are either possessed or their song has spirits attached to it because you can write a song and make it a spell and make it attractive. And people are chanting, cheering, screaming, crying they are giving energy and it's a form of worship to whatever entity and they feed off of it. Going back to the fact that a lot of gruesome things have happened on ley lines, whenever there is bloodshed it's like a sacrifice to whatever entity is on the ley line. 
what I found really mind-blowing is that the Bible does mention ley lines. Remember when I told you that they are referred to as a silver cord? Well, if you take a look at Ephesians 12, 6 through 7, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So right there you see the silver cord being loosed. And what that means is that even if you have a ley line, because a lot of people complain about sleep disturbances, they're being attacked by incubuses. They're being attacked by succubuses. Someone is astral projecting and they are sexually abusing them because some people do use astral projection to get it on. But the thing is, even with all of that, there are people that pray for the silver cord to be broken. And you can pray for the silver cord to be broken. That might be another problem. Sometimes people are like, I have no ties to the occult whatsoever. I don't have any books in my home. I don't have any pictures. I don't watch that stuff. But the one tie they may have, and it could have been formed by someone else, you could have bought a home and you didn't know it, is you're living on a ley line or a ley line has been formed. Here you are. And the best thing you can do in that case is pray against it. And of course, as I said in the past, if you're being attacked by any entity or even a person after projecting, rebuke in the name of Yeshua or Jesus and command whatever spirit to leave and take dominion and that will help with sleep disturbances as well but i found it interesting that ley lines can be linked to a deterioration of health because when i look at electromagnetism and electromagnetic radiation you're going to see a common trend that even when studies were conducted that electromagnetic fields and radiation had a role to play in people's health declining Another interesting thing before I leave the topic of ley lines, some believe that in the Bible, whenever Philip was translated to Ethiopia, that it had something to do with a portal or a stargate, and some link that to ley lines as well. I found an article that discussed a study done by scientists on rats to discover what electromagnetic fields could do to the brain. And the first thing that it described is that it could shred DNA over time. Another thing that they said could happen, although it shreds DNA, it could stimulate its growth. So it could stimulate the brain's growth as well. The next thing they said it could do is it could train you off of food and water. And they discussed how when the rats were given the solution and later exposed to the field, they developed an aversion to the solution over time. So... That's another interesting thing. It also caused a rat to spin in circles. It pacified their mood completely. It altered their moral decisions. So what happened was it took away the ideal of a person's intentions. And basically, morality was based on what occurred in the end. It also interfered with the ability to speak, but were still able to sing. The subjects were still able to sing, so that was another interesting thing. It induced pain, disorientation, and deep fear. It caused seizures and death in some cases. And of course it made them see ghosts or spirits. And I talked about this before, but spirits do have their own form of electromagnetic fields. And when a seizure occurs, it is described short periods of abnormal electrical activity in the brain. Some have linked the cause of seizures to electromagnetic fields acting on the brain. So as I told you before, a lot of paranormal investigators use an electromagnetic field compass or meter that measures the amount of an electromagnetic field in a home as well as electromagnetic sensors and meters and they say if it's high then that probably means that there's some kind of spirit in a home. There's a growing concern about the electromagnetic fields and radiation being produced by TV screens, security devices, radars, most mobile phones, Wi-Fi, and just about all modern technology and 
Some of the concerns are that it can cause sterilization, tumors, irritable bowel disease, damage to the intestinal mucus lining, colon cancer in more sensitive colons. So you would think that with that being a concern that it would maybe stop them or give them pause about building more phone towers, extending the Wi-Fi, but of course, no, we're going to extend it to developing third world countries, which I find interesting. So there was Project Loon, which its initiative was to beam free wireless down to developing countries by way of a skinny white hot air balloon. Uh, the balloon's floating routes were in New Zealand, Chile, and Argentina to provide free Wi-Fi. Of course, Facebook had to get in on the action, and Zuckerberg said that we've been working on ways to beam Internet to people from the sky. And our goal with Internet.org is to make affordable access to basic Internet services available to every person in the world. Which sounds nice in theory, but let's think about this for a second. You have people starving in these countries who are malnourished, who are underfed, and are living in terrible conditions, yet we're more concerned about giving them free internet. I think before they need free internet, they actually need to have an actual meal in their body and some stability. But of course, we need to give them free internet because of all of the health effects. Because there's been a huge push to kind of sterilize and get rid of a lot of these third world countries and reduce the population. Why is it that they're in a rush like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is quick to go to third world countries and give children vaccines which is part of Agenda 21. Now, the thing is Sub-Saharan Africa, I know this for a fact, is probably going to grow the fastest and third world countries for some reason have a huge amount of people having children and so what better way to sterilize the women of those countries and even the men by giving them free Wi-Fi oh you look you got free internet you can get on Facebook you can do this you can do that and there's really ulterior motives at work and of course the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs uh, stated in 2012 sufficient emphasis to promoting free independent and pluralistic media in developing countries so of course we need to get them saturated in all of the mainstream media as well everything from our pop culture to our news and I put news in quotation marks because half of the news today is just as bad as the entertainment and then there are theories that there are EMF weapons and devices that are used for harassment, surveillance, and mind control by agencies like the Pentagon, the CIA, and the NSA. And people say that it can manipulate the mind, it can change emotions, and of course trigger people. And one thing I heard a long time ago whenever I was first starting off researching is that even a lot of these little boxes that we put on our TV like DVR and all that it emits certain frequencies that mess with our emotions and our brain and that really could be the case I do believe mind control is a real thing clearly electromagnetic fields electromagnetic radiation energy it does have an effect on the human body it's a naturally occurring thing but at the same time too much can be harmful to the mind to the body I even believe to the spirit. Another interesting thing about electromagnetic fields is that they can affect our levels of cortisol which means that you can become a little more stressed with too much exposure as well. It's also believed it can mess with your melatonin which many describe it as controlling your day and night cycles for your sleep as well as contributing to the well-being happiness and is believed to fight radicals that can damage neurons so some electromagnetic radiation in fields can affect that and some believe that by affecting it it can also be a carcinogenic which is a cancer-causing agent
melatonin is controlled by the pineal gland, well, secreted by the pineal gland. And the pineal gland, if you remember in a video I did last year about if you look at the eye of Horus and you look at the pineal gland, you'll see that they look exactly alike. And the ancient Egyptians had knowledge of what the pineal gland did, and that is where the term third eye comes from because of melatonin. But the thing about it is, many also believe that the pineal gland was our way of being more in tune with the spiritual realm. And it's interesting that the pineal gland is also located in the brain. So I feel like electromagnetic energy field or electromagnetism in general and its connection to the pineal gland explains the paranormal and the health side effects as well. The pineal gland is also responsible for secreting the naturally occurring psychedelic hormone, DMT, which I've heard of people taking it as well to try to get a spiritual experience, and I wouldn't recommend doing that. But it's also linked to natural dreaming, near-death experience, and visions. So concluding everything, Electromagnetism is an important concept to understand how it is naturally occurring, but also how modern technology is sort of abusing it and how it is having health effects, as well as the spiritual components of electromagnetism as well. It seems that the ancients did have somewhat of a grasp on what we would believe to be more modern science. and. Like I said, it's interesting that in developing countries that they're more concerned about giving them Wi-Fi and all of this technology, knowing that it has effects causing seizures, cause cancer and all that. I'm not saying throw away your cell phones, get rid of your computer, because if I said that, then why would I make a video? But what I'm saying is just be wary and be aware of how EMFs, can affect you and your health and also understand the spiritual side. I don't know how we'll explain this because I feel like I jumped around a bit, but I hope you learned something, enjoyed this, and I also hope you have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you next week. Yahweh bless you and take care.